No, we have none here at City Hall. Turning it to the council. Now, John, am I correct? We don't need any action on this one that, tonight. That, it would be under the new business. That item. is correct, Mayor. Okay. Well, if there are no council comments here, you'll get another chance. So <laughs> we'll move on to our uh, next item of old business review of emergency resolution, encouraging the use of face coverings or face masks in buildings open to the public. And John? Thank you. Uh, this emergency resolution was adopted on August 11th. Uh, you had a meeting that night with regard to uh, the budget process. Uh, there were no changes made to the resolution at the August 17th, September 8th to the September 21st meeting. Um, this resolution, this emergency resolution does expire on October 10th. Uh, it is kind of the partner of the previous item, uh, emergency ordinance 1419. Uh, we do not have any changes to propose to the resolution this evening. Very similar to the last item, you'll be discussing it again here under new business under a different format. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to speak on this item? No, there's not at City Hall. Turning it to the council, any comments on this item? Okay, moving on to our next item. Um, is our standing uh, COVID issues. So if there's anything um, that staff or council wishes to discuss under this item. John or Mike, is there anyone uh, at City Hall that wishes to speak under this item? No, there is not. Moving on to new business, item A. Um, this is emergency ordinance requiring posting of signs stating that masks are expected at entrances to buildings open to the public. John? Thank you. Um, as I mentioned just a couple minutes ago, we had an emergency resolution adopted on August 11th. That'll be expiring here, um, coming up here. An emergency ordinance or resolution only can have a life of 60 days. Uh, so the August 11th resolution does expire, as I noted, on uh, October 10th. Uh, this resolution contains very similar language as the past or the previous emergency resolution. Uh, there's just a couple changes with regard to tents where on August 11th we talked about school would be starting or that the university would be getting underway with classes. Uh, we've changed that wording, but otherwise it's very similar. Uh, this resolution is set before you. Is, uh, has an effective date of October 11th, so it would pick up as the other one does expire. I would note we did change, um, in the, in the, compared to the draft we sent out, in the very final paragraph of the draft that we sent out, it used the language that had become effective immediately upon passage. Well, we'd have overlapping um, resolutions if that were the case. So we'd propose uh, the resolution be changed to effective October 11th, 2020. Otherwise, it's very similar to what you adopted in August. Um, other than those couple minor changes, and uh, an emergency resolution would become uh, effective with the date that you state for it to go into place. And I want to just clarify, I'm sorry, I had said that we were doing the ordinance, but we're doing the resolution. In the old business, it was the other way around, and here we're doing resolution first, so I apologize. This is the resolution encouraging the wearing of face masks or face coverings. Is there anyone at City Hall that wishes to comment on this item? No, there is not. All right, turning it to Council. Steve? If we would uh, pass this resolution again, then it would uh, last for 60 days. Is that the correct understanding, John? That is correct, yes. Okay. And we would review it again at every meeting as we do currently? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. I move approval. I I'll second that. We've got a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye at the roll. Elwig? Aye. Holland? Aye. Humphrey? Aye. Genowine? Aye. Lentler? Aye. Price? Aye. 
Ward? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Mayor Collier Wise? Aye. Motion carries. Next item, 8B, is first reading of proposed ordinance 1422 to require signage that the wearing of face masks or face coverings is expected inside of buildings open to the public. John? Thank you. Uh, as we noted a few minutes ago during the discussion, emergency ordinance 1419, uh, which became effective August 17th, does expire on October 16th of this year. Uh, as I noted, we've also had very good compliance with this emergency ordinance. Uh, since that 60 day uh, period is expiring, um, ordinance, excuse me, proposed emergency ordinance 1422 uh, pretty much does the same thing. It would establish another 60 day period. Uh, does again do the same thing with regard to requiring the posting of a sign uh, which states that mass expected per city resolution. Uh, again, the signs are still available at City Hall, the Chamber, or it can be downloaded. So tonight you would have your first reading. Um, if that's adopted, second reading would be on at your next meeting on Monday, October 19th. And then with any ordinance, uh, the fine would be established uh, with the second reading. And I think the last time I noted the memo, uh, the fine was $56.50 plus court costs of $72.50 uh, for a total of $129. Uh, but that's not what you'd be setting this evening. Tonight is only the reading, uh, first reading of the ordinance to adopt emergency ordinance 1422 to require signage that face coverings are expected inside of buildings open to the public. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to this item? No, there is not. Turning it to council. Any comments? Move approval. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Travis. Um, I just want to kind of voice my support for both the resolution and the ordinance. Um, I, I think it's important um, just for me to say that, that we are not out of the woods yet. Um, just because the, the current emergency ordinances and resolutions are, are, are ending, um, so far, we've been able to manage things in, in Vermilion and in Clay County, um, but things can change very quickly. Um, given the, the, the trajectory in the rest of South Dakota, you know, we really do have to stay vigilant. So I, I definitely support continuing both with the resolution and the ordinance. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye at the roll. Elwig? Aye. Holland? Aye. Humphrey? No. Genowine? Aye. Lettler? Aye. Price? Aye. Ward? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Mayor, call your wise. Aye. Motion carries. Our next item is 8C, resolution to change storm drainage fee. Mike? Uh, the storm drainage fee was created in 1992, whereby all real property within the city are charged an annual fee for operating maintenance and capital improvements to the storm sewer and drainage system. The fee is based on the lot area, a runoff waiting factor and the unit financial charge. Uh, the city uh, engineering department goes through and does the calculations for each parcel. That information is provided to the county for collection on the, with the property taxes. Uh, in 2020, the city is projected in, to receive approximately 261,000 from the fee and in 2021, with this increase, we'd be collecting 269,925. Uh, a lot of the stormwater projects uh, are fairly expensive and sometimes takes a number of years. Uh, the budget, uh, we budget includes in 2021, 2,500,000 for the city share of the drainage improvements along Highway 50. Uh, you know, 15,000 for storm sewer repairs, 80,000 for the downtown improvement project. Uh, with this being such a big year, the project 
We're looking to apply for a community development grant for assistance. Uh, we'll use SRF loans and the South Dakota Department of Transportation and uh, the storm drainage fee reserves to do this project. Uh, the proposed increase amounts to about 3.4%. A single family home on a lot of 10,000 square feet would see their annual fee go from $32.25 to $33.38. Uh, this fee for the year is projected to generate another $8,875. Uh, administration recommend adoption of the resolution that increases the storm drainage fees. Is there a member of the public that has any comments on this item? No, there is not. Turning it to council. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye at the roll. Helwig? Aye. Holland? Aye. Humphrey? Aye. Genowine? Aye. Flatler? Aye. Price? Aye. Ward? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Mayor, call your wise. Aye. Motion carries. The next item is 8D, resolution authorizing the purchase of three mowers for the Bluffs golf course. And Jose? Thank you. Uh, at the August budget session, the City Council reviewed the 2021 uh, equipment replacement schedule. As part of that 2021 uh, equipment replacement schedule, a 2010 Tour Real Master, a 2013 Tour Real Master, and a 2013 Toro Greens Master uh, were scheduled for replacement. Uh, administration would like to take advantage of a uh, National Intergovernmental Purchasing Aid Alliance or National IPA bid uh, from the Toro Company. Uh, through the National IPA, the bid for a 2021 Toro Greensmaster 3300 Triflex is $35,211. Uh, in two 2021 Toro Real Master 3555D uh, is $102,376. Uh, the Toro Company's participating distributor for South Dakota is Midwest Turf and Irrigation of Omaha. Uh, and they are willing to match the national IPA's price. Additionally, Midwest Turf and Irrigation has agreed to take all three mowers, city mowers, as trade-ins. Uh, they will offer 5,000 for the 2010 Toro Real Master, 7,000 for the 2013 Toro Real Master, and 10,000 for the 2013 Toro Greens Master. Uh, the 2021 Equipment Replacement Fund includes a budget of $126,092 for these purchases. The total cost for these three mowers would be $137,587. Uh, the existing mowers would be traded in, as mentioned previously, uh, with the purchases, uh, and Midwest Turf and Irrigation would provide a total of $22,000 for the trade-ins for the three mowers. Uh, the city had estimated the value of all three mowers to be no more than $11,000. If the mowers are traded in, uh, the net purchase price would be lowered to $115,587. Uh, administration recommends approving the resolution to purchase a 2021 Toro Green Master 3300 Triflex for $35,211 and two 2021 Toro Real Master 3555D for $102,376 from the Toro Company's participating distributor, Midwest Turf and Irrigation, and to trade in the 2010 Toro Real Master 52. 10D, the 2013 Real Toro Real Master 52 10D, and the 2013 Toro Green Master Triflex 3300 for a net price of $115,587. Thank you, Jose. Is there any public comment on this item? No, there's none at City Hall. Turning it to the council. Approval. Rich. This is primarily for the public, but uh, Jose, th these are not exact replacements. I take it that uh, Jim is happy with these replacements, with th these models? 
Yeah, they're not exact replacements. Uh, in a previous year, I think it was 2020, uh, we actually did the same thing. We didn't have exact replacements. So we, we actually, before we go ahead and buy anything or replace any of these equipments, we actually talk to the golf course uh, to make sure that this is what they want to do. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. We've got a motion by Steve. Second. And a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye at the roll. Helwig? Aye. Holland? Aye. Humphrey? Aye. Genwine? Aye. Lettler? Aye. Price? Aye. Ward? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Mayor, call your wise. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, moving to bid openings, we've got fuel quotes. Mike? Uh, the fuel quotes, uh, the first quote was from Gromax FS, unleaded gasoline, $1.69.2 per gallon. Uh, bid item two was unleaded gasoline regular, $1.77.7 per gallon. Bid item three is number two diesel fuel dyed, $1.40 per gallon. Bid item four is number two diesel fuel cleared, $1.67 per gallon. Uh, the second quotes were from Jerry Service and item one, $1.99. Item two, $2.12. Item three, $1.50. Item four, $2.04.4. And our other quote was from Stern Oil. Item one, $1.64.9. Item two, $1.79.22. Item three, $1.38.43. And item four, $1.66.43. Gromax FX was low on bid item two, and Stern Oil was low on one, three, and four. Is there any public comment on this item? No, there's none at City Hall. Right, turning it to the council. We're we'll broke out the low bids. Second. second. Okay. Got a motion and a second to accept the low bids. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye at the roll. Helwig? Aye. Holland? Aye. Humphrey? Aye. Genowine? Aye. Lettler? Aye. Price? Aye. Ward? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Mayor, call your wise. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, bid on electric transformers and Shane. Thank you. Uh, annually, the Light and Power Department receives bids for electric transformers. Uh, this year, bids were requested for a total of four different transformers of four different sizes. Um, four bids were, were with appropriate bid security were, were received from three different suppliers. A fourth uh, supplier did submit a bid, but it lacked the required bid security. Um, transformer bids are evaluated for operating losses over the lifetime of the transformer added to the initial cost of that transformer. Uh, the total base pit price is the initial cost, while the evaluated price is the cost plus the operating losses. Uh, in using this evaluation process, Irby was the low bid this year with a base purchase price of $62,856 and an evaluated price of $103,639.40. The second lowest bid was received from Resco with a base purchase price of $48,843 and an evaluated price of $104,567.60. Uh, this gives us a total difference of $928.20 between the evaluated prices and a difference of um, $14,013 on the total evaluated price. The low bid from Irby is for amorphous core transformers, um, which are manufactured by Howard. This bid is not the uh, preferred option for the city and it is recommended that that bid be rejected. Uh, the second lowest bid from Resco is for a silicon steel tr core transformers, uh, which are manufactured by Ermco, which is the preferred option for the city. As, uh, about 99% of our, probably over 99% of our transformers are the silicon core transformers. Uh, in addition to that material difference, we have had some uh, 
negative quality control issues in the past with the Howard transformers, um, specifically some, some doors and the way that they or were operated and uh, some rusting issues um, after a short period of time. Uh, the 2020 Electrical Distribution Fund does include uh, funding for these purchases. Um, it is unlikely that those will be delivered this year though, so this cost will be pushed into 2021. Uh, administration recommends that we reject the Irby bid with the amorphous core and award the Padmount transformer to the responsible low bidder Resco with an initial purchase price of $48,843 and a total evaluated price of $104,567.60. Thank you, Shane. Is there any public comments on this item? No, there's none at City Hall. Turning it to the council. Steve. What's the justification for us not accepting the low bid then? Is it okay? I mean, I've been told that we often have to accept the low bid, but because we're not thrilled with the core, is that okay for us to reject the low bid? On our, on our notice to the public on those, on all of those, we reserve the right to reject any bid. Um, so, so I believe that gives us the right to reject that bid because of that. Uh, in in in, in uh, conjunction with the with the doors and the the doors not being operated you know operate well and the rusting I think that gives us the right. Yeah. I move we accept the Resco bid then and Second. reject reject the low Irby bid. Isn't motion in the second. second? Rich, further discussion. Um, yeah. Um, Sean, I, I take it that we did not specify in our spec that it had to be silicon core, is that right? Yeah, that is not specified in our spec. The amorphous core are fairly new. Um, they've been out for quite a while, but we, we have only ever awarded this one other time for the amorphous core. Um, that was a conversation we had after the fact, it's kind of uh, brought to light is that we probably will remove this from the spec to, to, to make sure we don't run into this again moving forward. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we have a motion in the second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye at the roll. Kellwig? Aye. Holland? Aye. Humphrey? Aye. Genwine? Aye. Lettler? Aye. Price? Aye. Ward? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Mayor, call your wise. Aye. Motion carries. Um, the next bid opening is for recycling center improvement projects. And that's a bid opening and Jose. Thank you. Um, the recycling center uh, was built in 1972 by a private company as a warehouse and was not originally designed as a recycling center. Staff have been examining ways to improve the building for several years in early 2019, the city hired Burns and McDonald to complete an evaluation of the current building and make uh, recommendations for safety and efficiency improvements. Uh, in May 2020, uh, the city council entered into an agreement with Burns and McDonald to complete a set of plans and specifications to complete the improvements at the recycling center. Uh, the city opened bids on this project on September 30th, uh, 2020. The city received two bids. The bids were uh, from Sun Coda Construction out of Sioux Falls. Uh, their base bid was uh, $592,000, um, and the alternate bid from Suncota was for $29,100. Uh, the second bid was from Pesca Constructions out of Sioux Falls. Their base bid was for seven, uh, $712,346, $712, uh, and the alternate bid was for $32,220. Um, the city will have to revise the 2020 Joint Powers Recycling Fund to pay for the improvements. Early in 2020, the city requested from the Solid Waste Management Program, um, administered by the, by the South Dakota DNR, a grant to cover a project totaling $686,500. Uh, South Dakota DNR awarded the city a grant covering 50% of that cost, not to exceed $343,000. Based on the low bid, the city would, util would be utilizing the full grant of 343000 and city funds totaling $399,500 to cover construction costs and engineering costs. 
At this point, the city will need to amend the budget by $100,850 to have three to have $399,500 available for the project and remaining engineering costs. Staff is currently working with a low bidder to see if it's possible to modify the project to lower the construction costs. Due to the short time frame between the bid opening and the city council meeting, staff has not been able to engage in extensive discussions with the low bidder yet. Staff recommends that the city council table the decision to award or not award the project to Sun Coda Construction Inc. from Sioux Falls until October 19, 2020 to allow more extensive discussions to lower the costs of the project. Thank you, Jose. Is there any public comment on this item? No, there's none at City Hall. Turning it to the council. Julia. Yes, I'm just really happy to see us moving forward. And if we have to wait another meeting, then so be it. And so with that, I move that we table this item. A second. I've got a motion and a second to table the item. All those in favor, signify by saying aye at the roll. Helwig. Aye. Holland. Aye. Humphrey. Aye. Genowine. Aye. Lattler. Aye. Price. Aye. Ward. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Mayor Collier Wise. Aye. Motion carries. City manager's report, John. Thank you. Just a reminder, I believe it was the last city council meeting, uh, you approved a uh, noise permit uh, for USD VHS. Uh, there will be a concert in Prentice Park coming up on Sunday, October 11th from 2 to 5 p.m. Uh, the rain date for that is also same time, same place, but it would be on October 18th. A uh, reminder that city offices will be closed on Monday, October 12th for Native American Day. Uh, on Friday, October 16th is the annual Household Hazardous Waste Collection and that will be at our Missouri Valley Recycling Center on Crawford Road. We just uh, talked about the remodeling project there. Uh, that annual program, again, this, that Friday the 16th from 2 to 6 p.m., and the cost is $10 per vehicle. We do have two terms on the Business Improvement District Board number two that are expiring. Uh, this is the one that is working with the downtown streetscape project. Interested individuals are asked to complete an expression of interest form uh, by 5 p.m. on Thursday, October 15th. And then we anticipate the city council will make appointments at your meeting on October 19th. Our Historic Preservation Commission meets this Wednesday, October 7th at 9 a.m. And just a reminder, on the November 3rd general election ballot is a section labeled municipal question. Uh, this question is in regard to the adoption of a home rule charter for the city of Vermillion. A yes vote is to adopt the charter. A no vote is not to adopt the charter. If individuals are interested in reading the proposed charter, it can be found on the city's website. Uh, it's a couple different places, but if you just search for Home Rule Charter, it should pull up a copy of that. That's all that I have, Mayor. Thank you. Are there any questions for our city manager? Rich. Uh, John, you didn't mention it, but the um, census, has it, the date been extended? And can we accept that extended date to continue uh, getting uh, more information on the census? I wish I could completely answer that question. I know there's some federal judges that are kind of weighed in. Um, we had a call last week. Uh, a lady wanted to know about completing her census. We had a call last week about a lady wanting to complete the census, and I would encourage anybody um, that still hasn't completed the census to do it as soon as possible. I'm not sure the exact closure date anymore. They keep adjusting what that date is. Would we be able to get you on another mic, John? Can you hear me now? For a second, we could. How about this one? So far. Okay. So um, I'm not sure, um, Mr. Holland, exactly how to answer your question with regard to when um, the census will be completed. That seems to be a federal judicial question right now, but I would encourage anybody that um, hasn't completed the census to do it as soon as possible. Um, I anticipate that it might be closed sometime in October, but 
I don't have a firm date to offer you. Thank you. There are no further questions for John. We'll move on to invoices payable. Are there any questions for Mike? Move we pay our bills. Second. We have a motion and a second to pay our bills. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye at the roll. Hellward. Aye. Holland. Aye. Humphrey. Aye. Genowine. Aye. Lettler. Aye. Price. Aye. Ward. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Mayor, call your wise. Aye. Motion carries. We have no consensus agenda tonight. So. That's too bad. I move we adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye at the roll. Helwig. Aye. Holland. Aye. Humphrey. Aye. Genowine. Aye. Lettler. Aye. Price. Aye. Ward. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Mayor, call your wise. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all.